Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you very much, everybody. Um, it's nice to present this afternoon. Marion and I are delighted to be here. Um, we're going to spend um, about the next 40 minutes talking through some work we've been doing on supporting critical thinking through purposeful classroom talk. Um, it's going to be quite an interactive session. Um, we've got lots of activities um, and things to do. Um, and I just don't know how to move on. Oh, here we go. Great. OK, so the aims of this session um, is we're going to look in more, this will look in more detail about the principles of dialogic teaching. But very specifically, this work's been about making a link between what dialogic teaching is and how it can support critical thinking in students. And we've done a lot of work this year collaboratively across both institutions with a community of practice to really support staff to explore these areas. And we've done a bit of research um, on that too, which we'll come on to um, a bit later. So it's very much about getting you thinking about how to apply dialogic teaching to classroom discourse. But we also want to spend a bit of time asking you to reflect on where you think you use dialogic teaching in your practice and how you think that supports your students' critical thinking. So there's going to be a lot of sort of um, centered work around that as well. Um, this relates to a research grant that we were kindly offered by CEDA this year. Um, so that the project is very much about exploring a gap. We, it was actually some of our students identified. Um, I've developed a critical thinking skills toolkit, which is being used um, throughout the sector, specifically at Kingston and at Surrey. Um, but our students were actually telling us that the pedagogical approaches behind that, the activities, the discourse in the classroom, they felt they needed more from us. So that really got Mary and I thinking and participating precipitated um, us to start to think about how we can develop a teacher's pedagogy to support the use of the toolkit and to further enhance um, students' um, the critical thinking. Um, so we've got 13 participants who have worked on this with us this year from a really interesting range um, of academic and professional services disciplines. Um, and that was really driven by their need to enhance their use of critical thinking. Um, and how we went about this um, was through a series of academic development activities, which took place over this year. Um, it's a, a community of practice called Crit Talk. Um, and it, we, the purpose was to introduce, very much to explore and introduce um, uh, dialogic pedagogical principles to staff and to get them to practice this year in their, in their teaching about how to use it and to reflect back um, on what that meant. Um, so the key outputs of this are we're developing a good practice guide. We've got a range of case study examples from nurses to um, professional services staff that teach employability about how they've used that. So that resource is being collated at the moment and will be available. Um, and we have some dissemination events, which I'll talk about um, a bit later. OK, so moving on to Marion. Yes. So, yeah, lovely to see you all. And I can and looking at the names, we've got Matt, Elaine, Carol and Terry, Lisa. So um, uh, the next activity was going to be put your answers in the chat. But since there's so few of you, if you if you'd be happy to call out that would be fantastic but if not that's fine go ahead and and put your answers in the chat but we really wanted to practice what we preach in this session um, with you this afternoon so rather than talking at you for 40 minutes about dialogic teaching critical thinking we thought it would be more appropriate if we actually um, you know embodied some of the the principles and the, the theories that we're going to share with you so the first um, thing we'd like you to think about are the two concepts of dialogic teaching and critical thinking and it doesn't matter if you're not familiar with um, the di dialogic teaching approach but you know from the name I'm sure you can get some idea of what it might involve so what what comes to mind we'll start with dialogic teaching first what comes to mind when you see or hear this term anything at all I see Carol's put her camera on. that's great thank you Carol um, if others would so, like to put, okay, equality. Was it, sorry, was it Socrates? Was he the um, great dialogue or was it Aristotle? I can't, you know. Yes, yeah. I mean, they, they were both interested in dialogue, yeah. Uh -huh. mm. um, questioning. Yes, yes. yes. Um, Carol's put equality, yeah. Any other thoughts about what, what, what you think of when you, you see dialogic teaching? Um, are you inviting us to speak? Yes, absolutely. That'd be fantastic if you wanted to. Yeah, quite Hello. understand if you don't want to, but that's no great. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would think of like problem-based learning, uh, talking through mm. things with students. Uh, yes, yeah, trying to come to a, a kind of, not necessarily an answer, but to develop a student's understanding through through talk with, mm. with a tutor, but also potentially with peers as well. 
Mm, yeah, brilliant. Yes, talk. Absolutely. I see Carol put inclusivity as well. Yeah, that, that's certainly one of the principles, which I'll come to in a minute. Thank you that, for that. Any other thoughts, dialogic teaching? So we've got the notion of, of classroom talk, problem solving. Yeah, acknowledging complexity and messiness. Absolutely. So we've got problem solving. Clearly, debate is in there, isn't there? Deliberation. Um, Classroom discourse is fundamental to dialogic teaching, which, which um, Terry Lisa's just mentioned. Okay, great. So what about critical thinking then? Yeah, dialogue and discussion. Absolutely, Matt. Yeah. Critical thinking. What comes to mind when you think of that or that, that term? I think what is a balance yeah. between positive and negative mm -hmm. aspects because uh, there was a... Thing I remember, I think it was from many years ago, I think Di Hansels found that students thought critical analysis meant negatives. Mm, you had to mm, bring out all the negatives. And mm, mm. Yes, yeah, no, that's, yeah. yeah, so critique isn't just about what's wrong with something, it's yes, also what's right with something, balance, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, yes, thank you. Yes, and we've got more ideas there. Um, balanced approach, yes, similar to what Peter was, was talking about working up an argument in a deeper and balanced way. Yeah, so we've got that notion of deep, haven't we? Deep thinking, really analysing something carefully. Questions, yes, absolutely. Um, careful thought about a topic, yeah, thank you. So clearly the teacher's role is quite important here, isn't it? Because we've got questions, which could be teacher or students, of course. Careful thought about a topic does suggest planned teaching. It's not necessarily something that is always going to be spontaneous, um, not of being afraid of getting things wrong, yes, and we'll, that will be um, one of the, the features of dialogic teaching that we're going to talk about in, in a minute. Considered approach, yes, so to do with the idea of balance, looking at the evidence, um, looking at the pros and the cons, for example. Okay, great, thank you very much. Thank you for your um, participation there, that's brilliant. So one more thought then, how might the two be linked? So if if you've, if, if, as many of you said, dialogic teaching is about classroom talk, about asking questions, about um, equality, inclusivity, and critical thinking is about deliberation and using evidence. How might the two be linked in your minds? Any thoughts on that? Can you have one without the other? Well, that's a very good question. We, perhaps we can come um, back to that at the end of our presentation, Peter. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay, good point. Anybody else? Any other thoughts on how they might be linked? Yeah, yeah Terry? I, I would say that they were closely linked. Um, mm. However, I would say that um, dialogic teaching, I would say, might be a barrier for some students. Uh, they might be anxious. Uh, uh, Carol put in the chat about um, not being afraid of getting things wrong. I think that actually that could be a serious barrier to dialogic teaching as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's a good point. And we will be talking about a supportive classroom atmosphere exactly for that point. Um, Carol said there's an overlap, yeah, space for safe open dialogue. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it is, you're, you're absolutely right that the notion of safety and um, being, being a safe space, if you like, but having the confidence to share your ideas mm -hmm. as well is very important. Great. Thank you. Really, really fantastic um, contributions there. Thank you very much. So we wanted to start off with these two concepts because this is ultimately what brought Hilary and, and myself together. So we've known each other for a while. Um, but as Hilary said, she developed these amazing materials and resources for teachers and students on, on the, the Critical Thinking Tools Kit. Um, and after watching a presentation of hers, I thought, gosh, there's so much that we can work together here because I'm particularly interested in dialogic teaching. My own disciplinary background is applied linguistics. So I'm interested in anything to do with classroom discourse and the language that teachers and students use. So I just thought that it would be a great opportunity for us to work together. Um, luckily, Hillary thought the same. And so that's really underpinned our CEDA project where we've looked at um, how a dialogic teaching approach can underpin the use of the critical, think uh, the, the critical thinking toolkit. Um, because what Hilary was finding with some of the teachers she was working with, 
they were using it, but perhaps not using it as fully as they might. So that that was the aim of this project. Um, and it's been a, it's been a fascinating year, and it's been brilliant working with the teachers at, at Kingston, particularly, and also at Surrey. Um, and we want to share some of the things that we did with teachers, and also um, a few initial outcomes from our research. Um, so yeah, Hilary. Okay, so thanks, Marion. So just to give you a little bit of context regarding the Critical Thinking Skills Toolkit, which, as Marion says, underpins this work. Um, and it's interesting to see um, some of the comments that were made about what does critical thinking mean? And, you know, we were very keen with this work to um, frame critical thinking in a more positive perspective, rather than always being seen as being criticism. Um, and, you know, looking at the evidence in the, in the literature, um, the, the premise that we've taken is very much about immersing critical thinking skills within disciplinary content. So really making it meaningful, positive, helping students find their academic voice um, within the context of their discipline so that they were looking at information, finding information, making sense of it, um, looking at and analysing it in more detail, reading between the lines, um, evaluating it, using deduction, logic and assumptions, but then very importantly, where the link really um, came into play in terms of what Marion was saying earlier as well, was this explanation. Um, so really helping, um, using the principles of dialogic teaching to really help students um, be able to explain their thinking, to articulate their thinking, um, both to teachers, lecturers, but also to peers as well. So these are the skills that we were looking to really enhance through classroom talk. Um, and the toolkits, which um, I pulled together a few years ago now, were very much, again, based on this idea of this common language. Um, so the underpinning and um, premise behind this is to really bring critical thinking to life, demystify it, make it inclusive. Don't make it a scary concept and help students, enable students to see it really positively and develop that common language within assessment, within classroom discourse. Um, and really also link it to employability as well. We've had some really insightful discussions and, and inputs from our employability partners this year um, in terms of using these principles to really help students develop their metacognition in terms of what skills they're actually taking from their degree work into the workplace. Um, so there's been some really um, a broad ranging insights, which we'll talk about in a little while. Um, but the idea behind this as well is it's very much a, about a holistic scaffolded approach. And again, that's where the dialogic pedagogy really comes into play in terms of really helping students scaffold practice, get into the habit through discourse or really demonstrating these skills using active learning techniques infused with dialogic, pe dialogic pedagogy principles. So Marion, I think, was I doing this slide or you? I can't remember. I think this was you actually. Yeah, I was just replying to um, David in the chat, sorry. Yes, so just to, um, so Hillary's outlined where we're coming from in terms of critical thinking and what it means for us and in our context and, and working with the teachers that we work with. Um, and just a little bit then on dialogic teaching, a, a tiny bit of um, theory, if you like. So dialogic teaching approach really was developed by somebody called Robin Alexander, who's been working in the, the education sector for many, many years. But interestingly, in the school sector, in the compulsory education sector, um, and he's done a lot of work working with teachers, um, his work has found that when teachers use a dialogic teaching approach, um, children's uh, attainment in maths, English and other subjects is, um, is improved a lot. And the dialogic teaching principles are those on the left here. And I'll just go through briefly because this is what we, we worked particularly with the teachers on in this project. So dialogic teaching is collective. In other words, students and teachers work together with a common goal. Dialogic teaching is also reciprocal in that teachers and students listen to each other, actively listen to each other. Um, it is supportive, and that goes back to some of the points that were made in the chat earlier, supportive. A, a dialogic um, classroom is one where students should not feel any fear or embarrassment of taking part where they should not feel um, embarrassed by their answers and that there is support um, from, from all, all the class. Um, basically, they should have no fear, which is something that obviously needs to be developed before you can do any of the other parts of dialogic teaching. Um, dialogic teaching is cumulative, and this is probably one of the most difficult um, features to, to work on as, as a teacher and with, with students, in that um, the lines of questioning should build on each other. 
In other words, it's what we often think is, oh, we're having a great discussion with the class, but what, what it is in fact is teacher talks to the students and then the students talks back to the teacher and then it's a separate question or a separate point. But actually dialogic teaching or a dialogic classroom is one where students are building on each other's ideas because they're listening to each other actively and they're supporting each other. So it becomes a, a whole group um, interaction, not, not um, sort of lockstep as it um, often is. Dialogic teaching is also deliberative, and that's where it's particularly relevant to our higher education context and relates to the critical thinking aspect, because dialogic teaching is, um, is about debate, it's about discussion, it's about reasoning, and it's about using evidence to support your claims. And as we know, um, that is of particular importance in a higher education context. And finally, dialogic teaching is purposeful in that it is planned. So of course, we have lots of really interesting, spontaneous discussions with our students in where with, there are lots of learning opportunities, but, 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 the, but um, questioning and developing lines of question also need to be purposeful. They need to be planned. It's not a chat, it's an educational dialogue. It's an educational discussion that you're having with students. So those are the six features um, and I've got a couple of quotes that I, that I always um, think about of dialogic teaching. And again, they're all from the school sector, but I think completely relevant to higher education. The first one is, is Barnes, who wrote a lot about something called exploratory talk, which is similar, looking at the um, classroom discourse to support learning. And he says classroom talk has the power to shape knowledge through participant engagement with a range of processes, hypothesizing, exploration, debate, and synthesis. And it's interesting that that was written in the context of schools, because actually that's exactly what we like to do in higher education. And we'd like to think particularly that seminars and small group teaching has that purpose. Um, and then a recent report written by um, Robert Alexander and two of his colleagues looked at a, a project of dialogic teaching across a number of schools in the UK, and they found a correlation between classroom talk, dialogic teaching, and conceptual development and student attainment. So there is a, um, um, a, an educational and inclusivity um, uh, purpose to dialogic teaching, um, which is you know, important to remember if we want to help students develop their conceptual understanding. So just, take a minute to think about our own classrooms and think about how dialogic is your classroom, for example. Um, and these are questions developed from Robin Alexander's features of dialogic teaching. So if I just give you a minute, perhaps to, to work through some of those questions and think about them. And if anybody would like to share, that would be great. Is there any question there where you're thinking, yeah, absolutely, I do that. Fantastic. Let's let's hear about it. Or are there any questions where you're thinking, mm, I'm not so sure that we do that. Perhaps that's something I could think about a bit more. Hi, it's Ka Carol here. Um, Hi, Carol. Hi, Hi there. Carol. Thanks so much. This is um, re really tr tremendous. Um, um, I think what I, I'm thinking about my own context of um, maritime is it's about the value that students put on this activity. And I think it is um, convincing them that it really it enhances uh, that, that, that their learning uh, because I, I've used a lot of these tasks a, a great deal, but within the context of maritime education, you know, there, there is a lot of didactic um, um, te teaching um, because of the nature of the professional accreditation, but also the curriculum um, is often predetermined by a number of topics to be. So mm -hmm. I, I think, um, you know, that that's a challenge, but I, I think um, it can be done, done well. Um, based on positive experiences of, um, you know, dialogic interactions um, and peer learning. Mm, mm, absolutely. And, and the, the, the point that, that Robin Alexander makes in, in dialogic teaching approach is that, you know, there's nothing wrong with didactic teaching. There is a place for didactic teaching. And I think what, what, what we're keen to stress here is there isn't a right or a wrong, but we're just asking, do can some of that didactic teaching perhaps be done differently? Yes, of course, there's a place for it, but is there an opportunity for more perhaps student participation or peer work, or um, is there an opportunity for students to, to take responsibility for some of that teaching? Maybe they could 
do some peer peer teaching or that the, there's didactic teaching followed by dialogic interaction. So um, he talks about repertoire. So I think that's important to remember that we can't be dialogic all the time, but that there needs to be opportunities for students to engage intellectually with some of the, the content in this way. Thank you very much, Carol. Is there anybody else wants to comment on these questions here? Thinking about their own practice, perhaps. No, I don't, can't see anything else in the chat. Do you want me to, to move on no. to the next one? Yeah, okay. Yeah, thanks, Hilary. Okay, so we do have an activity for you now. We were going to put you in breakout rooms, but I really don't think that's necessary. So um, as part of the project, Hilary and I put together a number of what we call quick, quick guides. And so the first one we did was a quick guide to dialogic teaching, which was an overview of some of the principles. Um, and we shared that with teachers. We worked on that in one of our workshops. Um, I'm going to put it in the chat now because what we'd like you to do is, um, look at the quick guide and think about how any of these ideas on the quick guide might support um, critical thinking. So if I put that in the chat there, hopefully you will all be able to see that soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that, can you see that Peter? Yep. Yep, perfect. Okay, so if, you'd, yeah, if you'd like to open it, and again, you could put something in the chat if you like, or you can just call out. I'll give you maybe three or four minutes to read through the quick guide mm -hmm. and anything that comes to mind. Is there anything on there that it's making you think, yeah, that would be really helpful when teaching or working with students on their critical thinking skills? Yeah, so um, Terry Lees is asking about different classroom talk functions. So for example, Teachers might explain, they might ask questions, they might um, demonstrate, they might um, reason, students will reason, students will support their ideas with, with arguments. So these are different sorts of functions, different ways. Teachers might also use classroom talk to, um, to uh, you know, encourage students, for example, they may use it, classroom talk to develop the supportive classroom atmosphere. So it's different ways of using language to get different things done in the classroom, really. Yeah, so Matt's talking about um, organization space. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, I totally agree with you because we're so, we're at the mercy really of, of um, room planning, aren't we? Um, and the people who decide that. And um, it, it is quite challenging if you're in a room with fixed rows, for example, and you want students to work together. But, but there are always ways around it. There are ways of getting students to turn in their seats and things. But of course, with the online space, that is mm. different. It's a very, very different challenge. And that's one of the things that's, that came up in our data, which I'll show you later. Um, again, it's, it's about being creative with breakout rooms, for example, um, putting students into particular groups according to, I mean, it could be according to interest or according to uh, to, to different or just randomly assigning them it is a hard one to get right absolutely but it's worth considering is there any other comment about the quick guide and some of the ideas there um yeah yeah no good point elaine how to do it so that students don't feel threatened yeah. um again i think you know it, it you know, Matt's point about the organisation of space is important there, giving students an opportunity to work together perhaps in a breakout room before bringing them back to the whole class. So at least they've had time to prepare, to check that they've understood something correctly, to maybe, you know, collaborate on some ideas and then they're more in a position to, to share with the wider group. Um, I think that can help, certainly. But a high challenge also means high support to be the ideal scenario. So supporting them with the right resources, for example, and supporting them with the right language as well, which we'll come on to in a bit. Mm. Mm. To trust the process, yeah, good, good question. I think it, it depends how you, how you start. I mean, you know, teachers and students are always gonna have different relationships. And, and also it's not static, is it? Some, there might be some days where everybody's feeling very comfortable 
comfortable and confident and happy to share ideas. And then there might be sometimes when students are not, it might depend on the topic. It might depend on the particular disciplinary concept that you're grappling with. So I think it is fluid, but it's important to establish right at the beginning the supportive classroom environment. And, and Hilary and I actually spent quite a lot of time talking to teachers about that. Okay, I think because of time, we'll move yeah. on. Um, yeah, so yeah, next slide, Hilary. Okay. Okay, so just picking up on what Marion was saying earlier in terms of support for students, but also support for staff. Um, and what we've done this year um, is use an existing community of practice that's been set up at Kingston, um, which has really been running for about two years and really looking at the toolkit and how the toolkit can be used, sharing experiences, sharing ideas. Um, so we slotted into that, that format um, and we developed five very interactive participative sessions um, where we gradually um, scaffolded the process of introducing different elements of dialogic teaching um, and different repertoires of um, dialogic teaching and then link these to specific tools in the toolkit so that staff can start to make the connections between how to use a, a particular tool and how to use dialogic teaching principles to, to support that. And um, so we started off with a very much an overview of the principles and then we drilled into using something called the critique and I can share these resources um, afterwards and the critique is very much about supporting students and scaffolding how they dissect academic papers, how they look at different arguments um, and how they explain what the outcomes um, of these are. Um, we then moved into looking at the technique of questioning and again the quick guides that Marion mentioned earlier we have some information about that. Um, so it's about helping students question to extend and to, again as Marion said earlier giving them the tools using the appropriate language to help them start to build arguments. So the worksheet from the toolkit enables students to um, investigate specific arguments in different sources and then the dialogic teaching principle of questioning help them extend that in the classroom or online. We did a lot of this online obviously as well. Um, we then use the case um, which is basically a tool where students dissect information, um, perhaps in a business perspective, it could be a Harvard business case. In a nursing perspective, it could be a scenario based piece of learning. Um, and we introduced the techniques of discussion, deliberation, arguing, and again, supported them um, with language for that. Um, and then the final penultimate session we looked at was looking at dialogic feedback talk um, and actually bringing in some of the principles of feedback, um, again, to support critical thinking as a process rather than a product that's done on to, um, on to um, students. It's something that students engage with as part of their learning and using feedback to link into that. Um, and then the last session was only a couple of weeks ago and um, we spent some time just putting the community together reviewing content, um, looking at reflections on some of the activities that staff actually tried out in the classroom. Um, and we're in the process at the moment of pulling together some materials and some activities that have actually worked. And, and, and well, some of them have worked, some of them, you know, the things you want to work on from that. Um, and that's what we're pulling together um, into a good practice guide. So that was the sort of academic development activity. And here are um, the range of different quick guides. And Marion said, um, Marion and I pulled together. That's not true. Marion pulled these together. Um, so there's a range of different ones here, um, basically breaking down the principles um, of dialogic teaching, looking at discussion, argumentation, and just picking up on, I think it was Matt's point about the organisation um, of um, dialogue and supporting students to do that. There's some interesting ideas there in terms of grouping and spacing, how you model that kind of practice. We've got some in dialogic feedback talk, you know, looking at trying to see how Feedback, well, feedback is a dialogue, how to develop literacy, literacies around that, um, different types of questions, as Marion was mentioning earlier, um, different ones that can be used to extend student thinking in different ways, and then our overall overview um, of dialogic teaching. So a range of resources that we have already that we'll be pulling into um, the quick guide um, here. Um, so I'm just looking at time, um, Peter. We've got five minutes left. Um, so I don't think we're going to have time for the second activity, um, but what I'll do is I'll talk you through that, then you've got that, and perhaps that's something that you can um, take away um, for the future. Um, but what we really drilled into with one specific tool in the toolkit was the case, um, and I'm just going to flick on to that just to talk about that first before we talk about what we, we actually did um, in the sessions. Um, so the case is an adaptable framework to enable really 
students to apply theory to practice. So Carol, you were mentioning maritime earlier, the theoretical constructs behind it and the didactic teaching. You know, we found a lot of educators were saying that and you know that the case was a really nice bridge to enable students to apply the theoretical concepts to practice. So this is um, a guided activity where students go away, they research a case, they come up with the information, um, they, look in, um, they look at the analysis of that particular case, and then they came into the classroom and actually used some of the principles of discussion, deliberation, argumentation to scaffold some group activities where they were actually talking through what they had found. And more critically, thinking about the extension of some of these principles and how they could apply to practice. Um, so that was one of the key things that we looked at. Um, and so one thing perhaps for you to take away um, once you've had a chance to dissect this and look at that this more is potentially um, a scenario where you could use the case in your own practice um, and think about a contextual situation where students have to dissect a case or maybe it's a scenario if it's in health care um, and think about how you could scaffold and organize an activity in the classroom or online um, think about what the objective of that could be how you would organize it um, you're picking up on some of the really valid points in terms of setting ground rules for tasks helping students feel confident thinking about how they would feed back um, as Mariam was saying earlier, it's about giving them the tools, the language to enable them to do that. Um, and in the toolkit, we have developed two new tools to um, help students critically listen. So giving them some frameworks for active listening and also critically speak. So giving them some sentence stems, some language ideas to help them start to build that argument and to get these points across very much about building their confidence. Um, and then think yourselves about the, the language of argumentation to, to scaffold the discussion and to support students to participate fully. Um, so um, we can put these slides in the chat, we can put the activity in the chat for you to perhaps go away um, and think about it. But I'm just bearing in mind we've got about three minutes left. Um, so that can be a really nice activity that I think can be um, transferred across a wide range mm. um, of different disciplines. Um, so just to finish off, just very, very quickly, and we're in the middle of pulling together all of our data at the moment. Um, we did a range of different um, ways of collecting data. First thing was a pre and post survey where within the community of practice, the staff who had elected to be part of the study filled out a questionnaire before they started um, on the academic acti development activities and afterwards, just to explore how they were developing that thinking and developing that teaching. And we've done three focus groups um, just very recently. We've got some very early findings from this to really explore student, um, sorry, staff's understanding, almost their own metacognition of what dialogic teaching is and how that can support it. Um, and we've got some post lesson reflection as well, um, where staff have actually tried something out and used um, Cobb's model to really um, reflect on what that could be um, and what it meant for them in terms of their practice. So, Marion, do you want to just finish off the last couple of minutes just going through some of the early well, findings? I think, I think we've, we've got like three minutes left. I'll leave that there for people to see. But basically, the, the, the teachers said that there was a, they felt that students had a stronger voice as a result of using dialogic teaching to, to teach critical thinking. Classroom dynamics were more supportive. Um, they had learned a number of teaching techniques, but there were some of the challenges of online teaching that was brought up earlier. So I'll just leave the last minute to for, for people to ask any questions at all. If, if there's anything they, that hasn't been clear, please do feel free or just comment on any of the ideas that we've presented. Uh, a quick question, really. Where next? What are you going to do next with this? Because this mm. looks really helpful. That's, that's a good point. I mean, we're, we're quite sad that the project in a way has come to the end, but I think we're going, we're going to carry on because we've mm. been having these uh, community of practice meetings, as Hilary said, every six weeks or so, and the teachers are very enthusiastic. And, and some of them are saying, actually, in the focus group, they're only now, after a kind of year of this, starting to sort of see how some of the te dialogic teaching principles can work in practice. So I think it's, it's more of the same in a way, just a bit of space and time now to... to to try out mm -hmm. different sorts of yeah. ideas. Maybe a bit of action learning, you know, yeah. some action research from it. Um, I think I think that's right. And I think I just endorse what Marion said. If I'm saying, why is this finished now? We're just, we're kind of we're just getting going with it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I think a lot of follow-up is what is what we need to be doing. So that's definitely in the plan.